Welcome to my chaotic hummingbird garden makeover plant, friends. Growing joy. Hello, plant friends. My name's Maria. I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy in your life by doing so. And we're going to be growing a lot of joy on this video because it's comical. The minute I started filming, my neighbor started mowing his lawn. So I am so sorry if we're going to have some mowing audio interference. Also, there seems to be some bees that we have upset who are going to love the pollinator plants that we're about to plant. So this might just be a little chaotic. And you know the term gardener's chaos? It's like, it's the opposite of the calm before the storm. It's the storm. And then I guess we wait for the calm after. That's what I feel right now. But believe me, plant friends, I have a vision. And my vision is to set all of the hummingbirds in my area up for success by creating a patio container garden filled with plants that attract hummingbirds. Because if you follow me on social media, you know that I am obsessed with my hummingbirds. I live for my local hummingbirds for the last three years. We always have them come back to our house. I had started with one hummingbird feeder, then I got two. Then I started training the hummingbirds to sit on my finger and drink from the feeder while I'm there. They're like my best friends and they're not scared of me at all. They will come like this close to me if I'm near their feeder. So I'm hoping to create, you know, I, I got to keep up upgrading their house every year. As I grow, we got to give back to them and grow for them. So we're not just doing feeders this year, we're doing plants. And we're doing this in partnership with Espoma Organic because they create the best soil and fertilizer for the plants that we are going to plant. And we want them to flower and throw off so many blooms to attract the hummingbirds, to give them shelter, to give them food, and to give them a little joy too. So when it comes to plants that attract hummingbirds, here are a few things you need to know. Obviously, they flutter around with their long beaks. So they like trumpet-shaped flowers. So I have petunias. I have fuchsias. Any Hummingbirds tend to like any trumpet-shaped flower that they can in, insert their beak into to get the nectar. So I tried to get as many different varieties as the, at the garden center as possible. They also are attracted to pink and red. So you will see the, the majority of the flowers that I'm growing in this garden today are going to be pink and red with a couple of pops of yellow because, hey, we've got other local pollinators here too. And although this is for my hummingbirds, I felt like I should probably have a few things for the other pollinators as well. I want the access to the plants to be as low maintenance as possible for them. I want these plants to be screaming at them to let them know, hey, come here, have a drink and entertain Maria. This window is actually the window to my office, so I see straight out all day long. So I'm hoping to just attract all the hummingbirds as little distractions for me throughout the day. But I got these really low-maintenance, easy-to-assemble planters from Amazon. They have a hole in the bottom, which is awesome, and they come like this. They like have their arms, and then you just stick this on, and we'll be able to hang it. I'm a renter. I don't want to drill anything into these balconies. So this is a really low maintenance renter friendly option for if you want to add a little beauty and balloons to your window boxes or to your balconies and also feed your local pollinators. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking all of at all of these plants and I'm feeling overwhelmed, but I feel like we just need to dive in. So let's dive in. Obviously, I want these plants to throw off a lot of blooms. So I'm going to be filling all of these containers with Espoma potting mix and then Biotone starter plant food. We're growing in containers. So we have grow bags and we have a few plastic grow pots. The one thing you need to know about grow bags is they do dry out pretty quickly. So it's good that a bunch of these plants are native plants. They tend to be a little bit more drought tolerant. But because of that, it's important to fill them with high quality organic potting mix that is really going to support. It's going to retain moisture, but it's not going to retain moisture too much. It's like this whole dance that Espoma does very well. And also because of the retaining moisture, I might add a little bit of land and sea compost in as well. All right. So I'm going to show you how I plant up a grow bag and then I'll show you how I plant up one of these guys. So for the grow bag, this one, we're going to put a bee balm in. This is a red bee balm. It's going to have really beautiful red flowers, which will attract the hummingbirds here. I'm going to start with some potting mix. I should put gloves on, but I don't like wearing gloves when I garden, so sue me. So I planted the grow bag with potting mix. I'm now going to sprinkle some Biotone starter plant food. This helps prevent transplant loss. It's got mycorrhizae. It's got all sorts of good stuff that is going to help the plants um, establish faster, prevent transplant loss, absorb water. And now we have our gorgeous bee bomb. 
I'm not going to disturb the roots too much. I might just give it a little pinch. And I'm going to plant it into the grow bag. And now I'm going to top fill it and then top dress it with a little bit of compost. Especially with these grow bags, it's important to pat the plants down because the grow bags can kind of wiggle and move. And as it rains, the soil is going to get a little compacted. Oopsie, sorry. So I'm going to make sure that I'm giving the root ball a lot of support. I've never grown bee balm before. I'm very excited to try growing it for the first time. Obviously, it attracts other pollinators besides hummingbirds because its nickname is bee balm. We clearly have a lot of those at my house. And then I might top dress this with a little bit of compost later today or even later in the season. Bee balm is also a perennial for most garden zones. So I'm kind of treating a lot of these like annuals. But if I leave this in its grow bag, it will die back and then come back again. Perennials come back season after season. Annuals are something you plant once. It has its entire lifespan for that one gardening season, and then it dies back and you're done. So this is a perennial. It's wonderful if you're planting in ground in your gardens and you want to attract hummingbirds. Also, it looks really pretty in a bouquet. Now, let's plant up one of these cutie little... Whoops. Now let's plant up one of my favorite plants. And I, I love that hummingbirds love it selfishly because I also love it. This is fuchsia. These blooms are so insane. If you know me, you know hot pink is my favorite color. I love the purple and pink petals. And the shape of the fuchsia is perfect for the hummingbird to kind of insert its beak into. So we're going to give this its own show with its own pot. The version of this is called Aretes Upright Jolie's Nancy, and it's going to be the same situation. We are going to put a little bit of biotone at the bottom, pop the plant out, kind of measure to see where the top, you want the top of the, the soil that it's planted in to be the top of your new replanting. So I kind of want it to be maybe a centimeter lower than the lip. And now I'm going to backfill. All right, I have a lot of planting to do. I don't need to, you don't need to watch me plant every single one of these pots up. All right, everything is planted up. And now I'm going to give everybody a very thorough water to help the soil settle. You want to make sure that you water so water drips out the bottom of the pot because the soil obviously is dry when it comes in the bag and you need to hydrate the soil and also allow it to settle in the pot to protect the root system that you just kind of disrupted and then, you know, gave a new bigger container to grow, grow forth and be joyful. And now we zhuzh. I already have this planter that I planted a couple of weeks ago, actually. This was a planter I got from the dollar store. It didn't have holes in the bottom. And I actually took a drill and drilled holes in the bottom, which makes me really appreciate these planters. So I'm thinking that this will be the anchor. We have Dianthus, English daisies, marigolds, and sweet alyssum in it. The pink will attract. The yellow marigolds will also attract bees and other, other pollinators. Then we have beautiful pots of lantana and zinnias. I was just installing a garden for my sister in Florida and we planted lantana there. The minute we planted the lantana, not the minute, I'd say three minutes after we planted the lantana and water it in, a huge butterfly flew over right on the lantana. So this is a very pollinator friendly plant. Then I plant geraniums every season for my grandma as a memory because she had a ton of geraniums, but they're also a great pollinator plant. They have this beautiful bloom with white and pink. It's really so beautiful, this variegated blossom. And then we also have these red tubular flowers. What is the name of this? I think I might have buried the plant tag in the pot a little too deep, but they're red and they will attract our hummy boys. All right, last but not least, my beautiful fuchsia. We're going to hang this over here. Let me do a little bit of zhuzhing and I'll be right back. Okay, we're getting there from a cleaning standpoint. Here are the plants that we have. And then I'm going to do a couple of final touches to make this truly a hummingbird paradise. So from over here, we have some perennial plants that I've been growing in these pots for several years. I actually have no idea what's in that planter. We'll find out this summer after it blooms. 
We have snapdragons that have come back a couple of times. In these planters, we have the geranium. I found the plant tag for this. It is red hot Sally salvia. Hummingbirds love salvias and especially the red blooming kind. Then we've got lantana. We've got zinnias. We've got the bee balm surrounded by celosia and a bunch of purple sweet alyssum. We have lemon basil, snapdragons, more alyssum, more snapdragons. I have a purple echinacea coneflower in here because they like the coneflowers and a lot of other pollinators like those as well. We have what I already planted, then basically... I made doubles of each planter just for some nice symmetry. We've got our fuchsia. These are two different types of poppies I've grown. I don't think poppies are a hummingbird plant, but they are a great flower for pollinators. So these will also be experimental. And then for our final touches, I am partial to the hummingbirds, but I love all birds. If you know me, I'm a bird lady. I have a parakeet. I love birds more than anything. So I also set up bird, bird feeders from the dollar store filled with bird seed for our local bird seeds. We have a ton of juncos. We have cardinals. We have so many morning doves that my bird loves. And they all, it's like my bird lives in my workshop, uh, in my workshop. My bird lives in my office with me. So every time the birds come to visit the balcony, they also visit him. What other birds do we have? I have like a little bird ID pamphlet that I keep at my office desk so that when we get a new bird, I can identify them. I feel like that is your 30s into your 40s is like becoming a bird watcher. So anyway, we have two bird feeders for the non hummy boys. I also have hummingbird feeders all over my house. I think I have three or four at this point. You make a homemade solution, four parts water, one part sugar. You let the water boil, you add the sugar in, you let it cool down, and you want the feeder to be red because the hummingbirds will be attracted to the red. Don't buy the colored juice at the store. Just make your own sugar water for the hummingbirds. We have that here. For my also own enjoyment, I do have one of my Wind River wind chimes over here. The wind chime will sing with the birds. And last but not least, we have this epic petunia. This is a super tunia from Proven Winners. It is so epic. It is so large. I've never had one before, but we're going to grow it as a hanging plant right here. And I think if the hummingbirds can't find me and all of the amazing food that I've created, they've got a problem. But I have a feeling this balcony is going to be filled with hummingbirds this summer. I'm so excited. I really hope that all of these plants are an offering to the hummingbirds and that they come and they hang out and they bring their other bird friends and their other pollinator friends. Because the thing is, you grow joy by growing beautiful flowers, right? Flowers bring humans joy. But the other thing that brings us joy is giving back to our environment. And part of that and part of our responsibility as gardeners as in, and as humans is supporting our local pollinators and supporting our local birds. And that's really what this balcony garden is. It's an offering to my local birds. And I don't care if that makes me crazy. So let me know your favorite plants that you have noticed hummingbirds are attracted to. Do you have a plant that's been in your front yard that you notice your hummingbirds come back to every single year? I want to know which one it is in the comments. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for how I can make my balcony bird friendly. I have been Googling bird baths a lot on the internet. I think in the next month, there might be an addition of a bird bath to this balcony as well. Thank you so much to Espelma Organic for sponsoring today's episode and supporting my passion for hummingbirds and birds. If you're gardening, whether you're gardening in containers, in ground, with your houseplants, they have a potting soil, a fertilizer, and all sorts of support that your plants need to grow big and healthy. Follow me on Instagram so I can keep you updated on how these plants bloom, what blooms forth, what pollinators come, maybe beyond the hummingbirds. I'm keeping my fingers crossed the local squirrels don't find this. And I hope you grow some pollinator-friendly plants, specifically hummingbird-friendly plants, because it will without a doubt help you continue to keep growing joy.